In this video, we're going to barely scratch the surface of errors in hypothesis testing. We know that when we perform a hypothesis test, we have two possible conclusions. We either reject the null or fail to reject the null. So before I talk about any of these errors, I want to talk about a hypothetical situation. Let's say I performed a hypothesis test and I got a p-value of 0.052 and I was using alpha as 0.1. Now we know that if P is less than alpha, then we are supposed to reject the null. And if P is greater than alpha, we are supposed to fail to reject the null. So based on that, this P value is less than alpha and therefore I should reject the null. Oops, maybe spell reject correctly. However, what if I had the same p-value and instead alpha was 0 0.05? Well, in that case, p is actually greater than alpha and I should fail to reject. So I want you to note that I didn't change anything about the test except for alpha, the level of significance. So in one example, I'm rejecting and in the other, I am failing to reject. So alpha has everything to do with my decision. So now let's talk about errors. There are certain kind of errors that can occur when we are performing a hypothesis test. And one is rejecting a true null hypothesis. And that is actually, if you take a look at the table here, if I reject the null, the correct decision when the null is false, type one error is when I reject it when it is true. And that is a type one error and that has everything to do with alpha. So when we talk about errors, we have a type one error of alpha. And then there's also a type two error and that calculation is a little bit convoluted and we don't need to worry about it here. We just need to understand that if I reject the null and I'm supposed to reject the null, that's really good, that's correct. But if I fail to reject it, I wasn't supposed to do that and that's a type one error. If I fail to reject the null and I was supposed to, that's good. But if I fail to reject the null and I wasn't supposed to, that's a type two error. So again, we're looking at the type one error as the probability of rejecting a true null hypothesis. And we denote that with the letter alpha, which is the same as the alpha for the level of significance. And remember that we can choose alpha to be any value that we wish. So why wouldn't I just choose alpha to be really super low? Well, because as type one error, which is alpha, goes down, the chances of making a type two error, which we denote as beta, go up. So what we wanna do is find some sort of balance. Now, again, we're not going to be calculating beta. It's a very um, complicated calculation and really not important. It's just important for us to understand that there are two types of errors. The error of rejecting a true null hypothesis and the error of failing to reject a untrue null hypothesis. Let's take a look at an example. We have a television executive believes that at least 99% of households in the US have at least one television. An intern at the company is given the task of using a hypothesis test to determine whether their percentage is actually less than 99%. So notice they've given me the null and alternative hypotheses. When the hypothesis test is completed, the intern decides to fail to reject the null hypothesis. If in reality, 96.7% of households own a television set. Was an error made? If so, one type. What type? So again, we're looking at the hypotheses and we find 96.7%, which is in fact less than 99%. So based on that, assuming that that value is 
far enough away. Of course, we would have to actually find the test statistic and so on. But based on this, it seems that we should be rejecting the null. And notice they have in fact failed to reject the null. So essentially what this question is saying is the intern says, yep, it's 99%, when in fact we found 96.7%, which should support the alternative hypothesis. So that is a type two error because the reality was that we should have rejected the null and in fact they failed to reject the null. Let's look at another example. Insurance companies commonly use 1,000 miles as the mean number of miles a car is driven per month. One insurance company claims that due to our more mobile society, the mean is more than 1,000, and the insurance company tests its claim with a hypothesis test where the null is exactly 1,000 miles, and the alternative is that it's greater than 1,000 miles. They conclude to reject the null hypothesis. Assume that in reality, the mean number of car miles a car is driven is 1250. So 1250 does in fact support the alternative hypothesis. Since 1250 supports the alternative hypothesis, that means we should be rejecting the null. So they concluded to reject the null and that's what they should have done. So in this case, there was no um, error made. Last one is for you to try on your own. Um, when you're ready, press play to see how you did. So we have a study on the effects of television viewing in children. We've looked at this one before. That children watch a mean of four hours of television per night. Kiko believes the mean number of hours children in her neighborhood watch television is not four. She performs a hypothesis test using mu is equal to four or not equal to four. And she concludes to reject the null hypothesis. Assume that in reality, children in her neighborhood do watch a mean of four hours per night. So essentially we're saying this is true. There's no um, evidence to support that it's not true. And she has chosen to reject the null. Well, based on the fact that our evidence supports the null and she rejected the null, she did in fact make an error. She rejected a true null hypothesis, which is a type one error. Up next, we're moving on to section 10.2, which is actually performing some hypothesis testing. So hopefully 10.1 gave you a good foundation. Starting in 10.2, we're going to take a look at hypothesis testing. In this case, population means where sigma is known and it's a one-tailed alternative hypothesis.